Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's the first white band gap expert talk in 2024. We had a great white band gap conference in December 2020. 23 in the Hilton at the Munich airport. It was absolutely good to have a real event again. And we are planning again in December to meet again in person in Munich. In between, we have these expert talks that help to get the link between the application engineers in the field and the technical uh, experts uh, at the leading companies. It's important that we get the information back and forth and we need to reduce the barrier for people who are looking for new design and that they take uh, white band gap devices as their first choice. So, I see the speakers from Wolfspeed, EPC, and Microchip are online with us. Musava from Wolfspeed. What a nice picture in your background. Thank you very much. We are, I like to. <laughs> where, where, where is it? It's our uh, John Palmer factories. In, in, in what location? Um, it's in USA. Okay. In the upstate New York, the new one? It's right. This is the uh, metro... Um, or um, material uh, factory. Okay. So, Frederico, you're also, I see you. And Prady. Good, morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, are you all in Europe? Uh, Mustafa, are you in Europe? Located? Yes, I'm, I'm Europe located. Currently, I'm close to the set of now. Oh, that, that's an, a nice region. And, yeah, thank uh, you very much. You, you, you will have the fun of the carnival in Dusseldorf and Cologne. This is correct. And additionally, this, uh, uh, the yesterday, the, the, there are several uh, fair in close the uh, Dusseldorf area. One of these uh, currently is on running the boat exhibition. I was yesterday there. This is mm -hmm. nice locations to fit uh, several fair and several activities in Northern uh, Westphalia. Yeah. Uh, Pradeep, you are you are also in Europe or where you're coming? Hi. You're, you're in Europe. Pradeep. Yeah, hi, Holger. So uh, I am based. No, uh, I am not in Europe. I am based out of India. Oh, so I'm joining in from my home office in India. That's the longest distance, I think, than what we have uh, in our uh, talk now. And uh, Federico. You 
you are um, here in in Europe. Yes, yes, I am in Italy, northern Italy. Northern Italy. That's where all the nice cars come: Ferrari, Maserati, and that is correct. <laughs> So, yeah. We should start with the first question. My backstage tells me uh, a question should pop up. It's to microchip. Can you give us a brief information about your 3.3 kilovolt gate driver? Yeah. Which sure. high voltage modules does it support? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for having me here. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be part of this uh, panel discussion. Uh, yeah, our 3.3 kV uh, plug and play driver. Uh, was designed to support uh, high voltage uh, module packages. Uh, so when we look at these packages, uh, the standards are like uh, HV100, uh, which supports uh, very high isolation. And uh, if you look at the applications, uh, some of the popular applications that would need these high voltages are like uh, railway traction. Uh, and then within railways, we have these uh, auxiliary and uh, propulsion systems. Uh, then also these days uh, we do see that grids are uh, picking up uh, in terms of uh, need for high voltages. Uh, and then also about uh, megawatt charging stations, uh, which uh, is also moving uh, up the voltage levels. So what do we offer? Uh, maybe I would like to summarize in terms of uh, key features and uh, the benefits to customers. So if you see one of the key uh, feature is uh, it's a very compact solution uh, with uh, having an onboard uh, 10.2 kV uh, primary to secondary isolation. Uh, that's something uh, which is uh, very high isolation. So the way it helps uh, our customers is it benefits uh, by not having an additional isolation at their system level. And then we also have uh, incorporated the fiber optic interface, uh, which makes it uh, very robust and uh, uh, less immune to noise because noise is one of the key challenge uh, uh, the system designers face with. So by providing these uh, fiber optic interface, uh, the way it benefits is it, it offers a lot of flexibility and then the system design becomes uh, less complex. And then we also provide uh, the independent uh, high voltage, uh, sorry, the high side and uh, low side uh, control, uh, which can be uh, uh, monitored independently. And it also offers uh, some kind of fault signal detection. So by doing this, uh, we offer uh, the better control uh, in terms of uh, monitoring and also the protection uh, of the drive of the uh, system. Uh, maybe that one of one of the uh, last benefit is uh, like uh, last feature is like it has got uh, inbuilt uh, monitoring. Uh, I would say uh, the advanced monitoring and protection functions. Uh, we can do the temperature monitoring, the DC link monitoring, a uh, lot of uh, advanced protection features like uh, under voltage uh, lockout, uh, over voltage lockout. Uh, we also have uh, something like NTC to measure the temperature. Uh, and then the most important thing uh, is uh, this comes uh, EN5155 qualified, uh, which definitely saves a lot of qualification time uh, for our customers, uh, for the designers. And uh, that's, that's some of the key features and benefits uh, we offer with this driver. Thank you, Pradeep. Any additional questions? The next question will be shown. That's to EPC Frederizio. Uh, why are GAN fats suitable for agricultural drone applications? Thank you. Um... I'm uh, Federico. I'm an application engineer at Efficient Power Conversion in the Motor Drive team. In, uh, 
in the re in the recent past years, uh, Kian Fats have been uh, have seen uh, an, a great increase in their use in motor drive applications and in our centers. Uh, we recently developed an application for uh, agricultural uh, drones, which are widely used, especially in Asia, but not only in Asia, for uh, for agricultural purposes uh, to use uh, automated tools uh, and uh, improve uh, agriculture. So typically these drones are driven by MOSFET inverters, but GANFET inverters offer benefits in, uh, in their applications. The, um, the first great benefit is that thanks to the GANFETs, uh, it is possible to reduce uh, the overall volume of the inverter and therefore of, uh, of the system and of the drone. And the reduction in volume means also a reduction in weight, which is uh, vital in uh, battery operated application, especially if when, uh, when uh, when the vehicle has to fly, of course. And uh, also the, the first characteristics that everyone thinks about when talking about GAN is that they can switch, they can switch fast. And uh, thanks to the increase uh, of the PWM frequency, the, the waveform, the, the current waveform that uh, feed the motor are improved, are, let's say cleaner, and that gives uh, a, an improve uh, an improvement in the efficiency of the motor, which uh, of course, uh, thanks to the because of the relatively short flight time, an, an improve uh, in the efficiency of the motor also increases the lifetime, the 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 flight time uh, of the vehicle. I think that's one of the most important. Uh, saying that you have an improved uh, flight time uh, that you did not need to recharge and uh, stop and get it down and get it up again. Thank you, Frederizio. Thank you. Let me see. The next question will arrive. What is industrial e-mobility and what is the difference to conventional electric vehicles? I guess the questions are for me, right? Yeah, the question is for Musava. Okay. Um, the conventional electric vehicles market is, science here is, showing the big trend and currently is going to be well-known structure. But industrial mobility is looking more out of the on-highway vehicles, is focusing more on the off-highway vehicles. This is naming which we are going to then set as wall speed industrial mobility, which doesn't drive on the on-highway, for example, electrified water vehicles, for example, uh, for example, is um, construction agriculture vehicles like mining truck. In addition, uh, air taxi, flying cars, it's all these contexts counted inside the wall speed as industrial immobility. It is the uh, Clear answer, or should I go more deeply in the in the uh, in the application? Because um, these applications um, include several end system too. If you look, so for example, the agriculture vehicles, they have the auxiliary drive, which is the silicon carpet is fitting, and uh, not only the main drive, out of the main drive, all the applications are focused below the industry mobility. I think uh, if there are people who want to have some more details about that, uh, if they work in that area and want to get 
more from you uh, to use your products, they should come and we will link them directly to you. I think your general answer uh, is good for the moment and uh, we should uh, continue with our next questions. It's to microchip. And why would one consider to use plug and play gate drivers as against design, designing, designing the designing their own gate drivers? Yeah, so it's a it's a great question. Uh, I would say uh, so. Uh, if you compare uh, both these approaches uh, on one side, the plug and play and the other side, uh, you designing your own gate driver, uh, I would say both these approaches have its own benefits. But uh, in order to choose uh, which one is the best, uh, we need to put some context around it and then compare the benefits. So uh, when I say context, uh, when you look at uh, like when you look to have a gate driver for medium to high power applications, where silicon carbide uh, modules are predominantly used. Uh, there, I would say uh, using a plug and play driver adds a lot of advantages. Uh, so one of the key benefit is uh, time to market. We have all heard about time to market, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to throw some light on that more. Uh, like when you are faster to the market, uh, you basically achieve two benefits. One is you start to revenue earlier on your existing product uh, or on your existing project. And at the same time, you can start the next new development much faster. So I think we need to look at the time to market from these two vectors. And then one of the other benefit is uh, it saves a lot in terms of the qualification times and, and uh, the saving is in terms of months uh, when we, when it comes to qualification times, it again depends on the standards you are qualifying, uh, but the quali when you take a plug and play driver, you get the more uh, qualified uh, in terms of the standards, uh, whereas the designing your own would need uh, all the qualification to be done at the customer end. And then the, then the uh, most uh, important benefit, which we all learned uh, during the supply chain crisis was how uh, important it is to uh, ease the ease of supply chain, right? That becomes very important uh, when you decide whether to go with plug and play and uh, versus designing your own grounds up. So all these factors uh, somewhere contribute uh, in the decision making uh, of which approach to go. And uh, that's where I would say that uh, uh, when we try to put a context, uh, it, it becomes more clearer uh, that plug and play uh, is, is, uh, is beneficial. Yes, I fully agree. There is a long history. If I look back to CT concept and uh, Heinz Rüdi, we have seen years ago that this concept was extremely uh, successful uh, and served uh, the industry of uh, high voltage uh, power modules very, very well, even before white band gap was a big story. Yes. We get the next. <clears throat> that question is addressed to EPC. What are the advantages of a GAN inverter with respect to a traditional MOSFET inverter in motor drives for agriculture drones? Thank you. So the, the typical approach of a, a traditional MOSFET inverter is to drive it uh, at a frequency close to 16 to 20 kilohertz and uh, using uh, electrolytic capacitors on the DC bus 
because of uh, the low uh, PWM frequency. Whereas in a, in a more innovative uh, gallium nitride inverter, the operating frequency is uh, easily brought up to 100 kilohertz, which is not possible because of the high switching losses in the MOSFET inverter. And thanks to the much higher switching frequency, the ripple current on uh, on the DC current on the DC link current is heavily reduced, and so the the size, the dimensions of uh, the input filter can be shrinked by a very important factor. And so this is uh, one of the reasons of the reduction in the volume of uh, gallium nitride inverters. And also the a higher P PWM frequency reduces uh, the not only the ripple current in the DC current at the input of the, of the inverter, but also reduces the ripple current on the phase current that goes to the motor. And this reduces uh, the, the ohmic losses uh, in, the, in, the winding, in the resistance of the windings of the inverter which means to, to reduce the, the heating of the motor and improve its efficiency. Thank you, Frederico. We have the next question coming on. That's addressed to Wolf Speed. How does silicon carbide uniquely enable industrial e-mobility within and beyond the main inverter? Mm -hmm. um, good questions. Thank you very much. Um, we are seeing a trend uh, that the battery voltage increasing, which leads the use the common bus bar inside the application by different end systems which could be then um, HVAC, which could be then AUX drive, for example, crane or anchor drive on the water vehicles, and so on. Um, we are seeing silicon carbon more and more in different kind of the end system. We are getting some inquiry on the, uh, by using in the same bus bar voltage, which I'm calling by uh, 400 to 800 or uh, by some applications uh, more. Uh, the bus bar voltage and uh, in, 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 uh, going to be 1.5 kilowatt area. And all these uh, end system can be driven on, on one bus bar, which is uh, effectively help to reduce the overall losses. And not only is um, unidirectional by using by bidirectional um, topologies is a silicon carpet is offering um, big advantages on the system level as um, the, my leader guy Max is already sell uh, the power electrons without uh, silicon carpet is not sexy so I just wanted to underline exactly is the silicon carpet which is fitting to the voltage level for the DC bus bar from 270, which is going to be used on the air application up to 1.5 kilowatt area, exactly the fitting area, which is silicon carpet showing the best performance in these voltage classes. Um, this is the big discussion is the, uh, not only then sporting on the um, silicon carpets, on the on this technical technological level, also is the big discussion to support the uh, customer inquiry from production capability point of view. Um, biggest dramatic impact in the industry, uh, looking for the capacities. Not only then efficiencies at big topics, also is that the capacities are big topics. As everybody know, we have these, these conversions more than more than twenty times per day. Um, is the challenge um, not only the give the best performance, also the challenge is to give this trustable, suitable 
supply chain on the whole circle. And uh, from that point of view, the was bit is the looking um, forwards by increasing of uh, several uh, um, capacities stuff um, in different location. And um, therefore, what I would say is that from technical point, silicon carpet is fitting the area from uh, experience on the silicon carpet over the 35 years. And additionally, product capability is fitting the wall speed on this industry mobility segment. Thank you, Fre Federico. Backstage. It's a question to microchip. What are some of the key benefits of using digital gate drivers? Yeah, sure. Uh, maybe I take a step back and uh, we, we all know how important a gate driver, uh, like what is the role of a gate driver in any power conversion application. So uh, when the importance gets more, uh, when we are trying to use uh, silicon carbide because gate driver play a very important role. And uh, we all also know that uh, how digitization is catching up and uh, getting into all fields. Uh, so why not gate driver? So what's happening around this is uh, uh, what digital does to gate driver is it offers flexibility uh, in terms of uh, setting up the parameters through the keystroke. Uh, than using the uh, traditional methods of uh, uh, using a solder iron uh, for uh, uh, by changing gate resistors, right? So that's the flexibility uh, digital adds to the gate driver. Uh, now coming to the digital gate driver terminology within microchip for our gate driver, right? So we uh, have a patented uh, technique called uh, augmented switching. And uh, with augmented switching, one of the key benefit uh, with our gate driving technique is uh, we can precisely control the turn on and turn off, uh, meaning uh, we can make it configurable. Uh, and then uh, we also are able to uh, lower the voltage overshoot, uh, then uh, also lower the switching loss losses. And uh, what it uh, helps is it helps in uh, uh, the fastest response time during any short circuit. So that's one of the uh, main benefit uh, and the uh, main outcome that we can see uh, uh, with uh, going with the digital uh, gate driving technique. Thank you, Pradeep. Thanks. The next question is arriving. So it's again addressed to EPC. What is the impact of using ceramic capacitor technology instead of electrolytic capacitor technology in the DC link of a motor drive inverter for agricultural drone application? Thank you for the question. That is a very important uh, topic to, to examine it because really the, 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 the reduction of the dimension of the inverter is really related to the DC link because thanks to the increase in the switching frequency, it is possible to switch from the traditional approach of using uh, large electrolytic capacitors to ceramic capacitors. And uh, the effect is not only, is, is, a, is a double benefit because uh, usually the, since the electrolytic capacitors uh, are not uh, a very good uh, uh, low induction low source uh, in uh, MOSFET inverters, uh, decoupling capacitors, small ceramic decoupling capacitors are needed uh, to be placed uh, close uh, to, to the switching cells. Whereas uh, in, uh, in a more compact uh, gunfet inverter, it's possible to, to place the DC link ceramic capacitors relatively close to the switching cell with a low inductance path. And so not only the DC link, uh, overall DC link is reduced, uh, but it's also possible to, 
to eliminate the, the decoupling capacitors because the, this link uh, has, uh, integrates these two functions. So mitigate the fluctuations uh, of uh, the input voltage and uh, provide a low inductance path for uh, the power supply during uh, the commutation. Thank you, Federico. We ran out of questions. We should see if there are general items that we can discuss between the four of us or just ask the auditorium if they have questions not delivered. I think it's too early in the year to get questions. <laughs> we need always a good dis uh, excuse. Yeah. Um. Maybe I can bring some comment out of the text, out of the articles. This yeah. um, as well known topics at the moment worldwide. Uh, each country is already set uh, a target to decrease the carbon dioxide emissions and. Uh, Last week was also agreement um, uh, to decreasing of the carbon dioxide emission worldwide. And uh, big topics at the moment, decarbonization. And uh, just to make the electrifications of the vehicles will definitely not fit the reach the target on the decarbonization level. And this needed to be the whole circles from the renewable energies, from the HVDCs until the charging stations and go to the vehicles. This whole circle going to be then completed um, as one page, as one game to reach the target. And this will be as is the key topics uh, from the industry mobility. It's a one part of the chain to help for the decarbonization. Um, most probably, uh, Mr. Bodo, you have also a lot of uh, discussions uh, in the past with the DAC organizations. Maybe you would like to add some context in this contest. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, it's the right way and uh, burning fuel burning wood, burning oil is uh, something that we have to minimize. And I myself had uh, made a major step in last year. I had put a solar panel on my roof. I have an inverter and a an storage system and a wall box. And uh, in addition, I got an electric vehicle. And finally, had a heat pump uh, installed to my house. So at that point, I did all what's possible to minimize the carbon footprint. And that's something what I believe uh, we all have to do, especially uh, in respect that uh, our children and grandchildren should have uh, an, 
world where they can live in. Yep. Rising temperature is a real, real problem, and we see it uh, in the craziness of the weather. We have flooding all over the world, and uh, on the other hand, we have dry uh, re uh, uh, regions uh, during other times. So it's it's important that we understand that the nature needs a breath and a break from overstressing uh, we have we have questions that came in and now we will continue with the questions it's to epc how can a gan motor drive inverter enhance the efficiency of a motor drive inverter yeah, thank you. That's a very good question because uh, that is really one of the key points of using GAN in motor drives. So most of the motors that are uh, permanent magnet motors that are used uh, in uh, nowadays uh, are uh, three-phase motors with uh, sinusoidal, uh, uh, sinusoidal uh, modulation. So the three phase currents have the shape of the, of the of sine wave. And of course, this sine wave is not perfect because it needs to be modulated by a, a, a PWM. So the higher is uh, the frequency, the closer the shape of the current uh, is uh, to a pure sine wave. So a higher switching frequency, which is possible in uh, gallium nitride inverters gives uh, um, a phase current which has a, a lower harmonic content. And so in that way, the motor is uh, better excited. And also, of course, thanks to the smaller uh, PWM time, the, the ripple current is uh, in the phase current is smaller. And the ripple current only contributes to heating uh, due to joule effect uh, in the resistance of the windings of the motor. Thank you, Federico. Thank you. We get another question for you. Could you talk about avalanche capability of GAN hemp? Does the absence of avalanche capability pose any challenge for adaption of GAN hemp? Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the second question already talks about the first one because actually there is no avalanche effect in the gallium nitride uh, high electron mobility transistors that are the most typical uh, gallium nitride devices to be found. Because it is true that uh, there is a reverse conduction, but that there is no body diode. So the reverse conduction is not associated uh, to a body diode. And therefore, there is no avalanche effect. So the absence, the, the absence of the avalanche capability is not uh, is not really a, a, one of the major challenges that uh, designers face. There are other challenges, and also I'm not an expert in that field, but typically when uh, as there is uh, at least a 10% extra voltage. Uh, uh, withstand uh, above uh, the, the the rating of the device. Federico, a couple of years ago, there's a good article generated by GAN Systems uh, about to stay safe, uh, the ratings in the data sheet are 30% roughly below the maximum capability. And uh, I remember I was at an ECCE uh, conference in Denver 
and there were Asian uh, students presenting uh, something uh, motor control with GAN uh, modules and they had damaged all the modules and uh, to me it was clear they were at the maximum ratings of the GAN devices and did not put a margin of 30 uh, to 40 percent in for their uh, motor drives. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that's a good uh, to the to the question a good answer from both of us. <laughs> yes. And if uh, the question uh, uh, near the people can go back in my archive and find that article from Gun Systems. Okay. There is another question. It's again you. What are the key device reliability challenges that are yet to be solved for gun hands from circuit system level operation point of view? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's not easy to, to, to answer to this question because reliability is uh, highly uh, related to, to the shape of the device. For example, in, in the past, uh, we have noticed that making a very, uh, very short and long devices uh, gave uh, reliability issues due to thermal expansion. Because of course, when you have something that is very, very narrow and very long, uh, yet it has uh, a higher mechanical stress on the long side. So that is somehow dependent on the circuits. And uh, for sure, one very, something that uh, we, we have, uh, customers uh, with uh, is uh, to really take care of the gate because the gate uh, typically MOSFETs are have 15 to 20 volts gate while in the GANFET uh, the, 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 the recommended voltage is 5 volts and if you go if you go to 7 8 volts you are have also you have already great chances to to destroy the device so in that case, uh, the design uh, of uh, the gate loop uh, inductance uh, is uh, it's really important to to have the board working and not uh, blowing uh, the gate of the devices. Okay. My backstage gives me the indication there are no more questions. And I think we had a good uh, uh, starting in 2024. And looking forward, see you probably at APEC, at PCIM, or at our White Band Gap conference in December 2024. It's a great pleasure for me to have that good auditorium and the great speakers and all the best for the rest of the day. Bye for now. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.